Hey, hey. <laughs> Hi, uh, you are welcome to our channel again this lovely Friday. Uh, is the sun sunning? Almost, almost sunning. Anyways, um, hey, today we're going to be talking something a bit serious, yet a bit sensitive, and I don't know how to lighten it up. But it's it's serious, so I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Should we just get right into it? Okay, so this conversation started a few months ago, before my son resumed school. And I was um, trying to make him start to eat solids, solids, solids. Um, I don't know if your child is like my child, but my son is three this november at the end of november 25th and he hasn't started to chew on food i think i missed that um development for some for some first of all transitioning i'm transitioning his young brother now transitioning a breastfeeding fully breastfeeding no bottle fully transitioning a breastfeeding child male child let me add to um foods is 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 a task but we will survive but i think i was i've said it before in my winning video that i was ill-equipped and there were some things i just some processes i just botched up i just messed up and i think it's still affecting him till now so i feel guilty to an extent so anyways before he resumed this class i felt a need for him to at least start eating to an extent some solid food and to, to an extent i was right i felt that this teacher may not be as patient or as understanding to still be spoon feeding my child a child that has no no neurological problems as such a relatively extraordinarily normal child <laughs> you know and he's still you're still spoon feeding him etc and he's not even solid food you're still spoon feeding him pureed food so i i got into that um wind of anxiety and you know worry basically oh i'm concerned over him that how will i want my child to i want my child to be excellent in every ramification i want my child to cope i don't want my child to be a problem to anybody and i don't want i just want my child to to excel in the best ways that it can without seeming like a trouble to anybody so one of those days where i was trying to teach him to eat solid foods and i'm not i wasn't successful by the way um i got frustrated i got angry and i felt because my my son will put the food he would put the rice he would put whatever in fact before that he would willingly come and put the ri rice or put the eba or put whatever in his mouth he would chew it and then he would get to the point of swallowing and then he would spit it out. And I'm like, please, if there's any doctor in the house, please, what's happening? I'm, 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 still, I'm even still baffled. But I know of a friend that her son was doing similar and her son um, kind of moved past that at the age of five. So my son is still is going to be three. And there's just a lot of judgment sometimes. Even when I go out, there are people looking at, oh, you're still feeding your child puree food okay um this child is spoiled so some of those thoughts got into me and one of those days i was super angry with him and i was flogging this child to eat and there was nobody at home it was just me him um and his brother okay i think at a point she either stays with us was around or she saw it and she was like ah, i think you're doing a bit too much and it wasn't until I think I, I don't, I, 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 I spank my child, which is which means I hit my child, but I don't use any, um, I don't use violent languages on him. I don't, I don't, um, let's just say the extent of in quote abuse because I feel I abused him that day is hitting or spanking my child. So I was so angry that it wasn't until my son, I think I hit him across the face or so. And he should eat his food. And then he, he, he seemed dazed. And then I, I caught myself. I said, okay. I know this is sensitive stuff I'm saying on, online. But yeah. I caught myself and I'm like, what did I just do? What did I just do? And I, I just wrapped it all up. 
and I asked, I told him sorry. And he wasn't cr exactly crying at that point. I think he was also surprised. He was also shocked. And then he really started crying. And then immediately I went to my room. I cried. I told my husband, oh, I think I just did something criminal. <laughs> <laughs> i think i just i know africans spank etc but i know deep down in my heart that i had lost some form of control you know yeah i'm sharing this this is vulnerable moment i'm sure oh god please don't let this come back to bite me anyways so <laughs> um we have cctv in the house so i went back and i watched the video and i watched myself and i'm like what 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 actually came over me and it started from worrying it started from comparing myself or comparing my baby to other babies it started from not wanting him to be less not wanting him to be adequate to the point of now almost actually it was abuse actually abusing him to rectify something that i felt that i had done as a mistake and I was scared that wasn't rectifiable. I don't know if I'm making any sense. And I don't know if this is going too long. I don't know if this is too heavy for anybody. But I'm getting somewhere. So from that moment, I started to... I, 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 the first person I went to talk to, of course, is, my, is his father, my husband. Because I noticed that I am more quick with my hands than he is. Even till now, he's, he's not um, as quick with his hands. And we began to kind of compare backgrounds, or I compared backgrounds. His parents, they never beat him. His father only beat him once, and he really did something naughty to deserve that spanking when he was a child. My father never really beat me. I can't even remember if he ever beat me. But my mother, right, I feel she had anger issues. My mother beat even some of my siblings to coma. <laughs> It's funny, but it's true. My mother was, my mother was a lioness, and 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 in every sense of the word. And but I feel that there was some abuse that she must have experienced, and then kind of passed on. So I began to, because <laughs> I, I I I I I I am someone that is I I can be reflective. There's something that I don't like. I sit down, I think about it, I pray about it, and then I try to deal with it. I look for solutions for it. I'm still seeking solutions, you know, within my means. So I, I spoke to my sister. And coincidentally, I think she sent me something from one doctor. I can't remember his name now. I, I told you guys I didn't exactly prepare for this video, but I will see if I can find his name. I will link it. And that doctor spoke about something that happened to him where his child did not um, say happy birthday on his birthday or something. And then he yelled at his child in front of everybody, basically disgracing the child in front of everybody. Oh, by the way, I've, I think I've, I've spanked my child in front of everybody. And it was still food related matters because he wasn't eating outside and I was really spanking him to eat because I was so fed up. So yes, that has also happened before. <laughs> god have mercy anyways so um this man talked about how he yelled at his son and then he realized that this was like a repetition of something that had happened during his childhood or something so he was replaying it and in quote he was passing on the dra trauma and that trauma or abuse is so funny that it can even be passed in your dna right and we are moving on now to the solution if you're thinking this applies to you as it applies to me if you're reflecting on those moments i think um, one of the first things to do is to sit down sit down and look at the times when in quotes you feel like you have abused your child there are times when you discipline your child i believe in discipline but then again there are some lines that you cross i won't say there's a thin line between discipline and abuse i don't want to sound um that's too high but there are some lines there's some gray lines in between discipline and abuse and then you begin to cross and you begin to climb like a, like a wall like a fence and if you're not careful you climb to the other side right 
so i'm sure this 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 is i'm sure somebody's understanding or relating what i'm saying this this discussion is not in vain <laughs> so so that day i um I, after i i just resigned to the fact that my son will keep eating pureed food i know that within my might i have done everything that i can and i will just continue to pray for him and trust god that at the right time he will start to eat as he should eat at least he's eating at least he's chubby at least he's nice at least there's nothing wrong with him neurologically so why was i so angry that he wasn't doing what in court other children were doing and why was i abusing the poor boy <sighs> the rich boy even in examples my children are rich eh? why and i thank god for 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 my village the truth is that it takes a village to raise a child and in another sense it also takes a village to abuse a child so before um before i gave birth to my to my son i used to i used to say that my sister was my first child my first baby and i used her to practice so i realized that i had a lot of when when we started to live together because we started to live together um without our parents when i got back from nyc and that was 2016 or so yeah that was when we really started to live together just me and her and i started to i i started to consciously practice taking care of somebody else somebody else being in my care and i know i know that sometimes i would abuse my sister sometimes i'm not saying insults with words but i could be emotionally abusive yeah I knew that I would do some of those things. And then she would come back. And my sister is such a beautiful heart. She has her flaws, but she's beautiful and she has a good heart. And she's also very, very aware. She's self-aware. So when you are doing some of those things, she may allow you, like we may. And there's some people that she doesn't think rubbish from, but we may. She was a bit lenient. And then she would later come back and tell me this and this and this and this were the things that you did that broke my heart. You consciously broke my heart. And then I would, um, and then I would apologize, and then I would go back, and then I would self-reflect, and then I would work. I would so consciously and consciously. My sister would probably say when we started out together, because she still she even lived with me when I was pregnant. My most vulnerable moment. She lived with me beyond that. We lived together, because she had to come here for NYC. She would say that I was, I was, I was. And pe people would not know, but I was I was kind of angry. I was kind of angry. And there was a source to that anger, a source I cannot share. There were some things that happened in my childhood. And even some other family members are not aware of, you know, that was some of the cause for the anger that I had. Albeit, I would not remove the fact that maybe I was also spoiled as a human being. But, yeah, those things also had a root had a source and um i would say that some of that not every part of the trauma resulted in something negative right um i don't know if uh, this is medically correct or psychologically i'm just saying but i feel like some 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 part of that trauma builds some strength and resilience in me there's sometimes there's nothing that you throw at me especially um when I got to know God, that by God's grace, you know, I, I can, I, I'm, I'm resilient. For those that know me, I look, I may look fragile, it is see, but I'm, I'm a bit resilient. I'm a bit tough. So, but, but, but some of that, that also, some of that trauma also created something negative, uh, if, if I'm being honest. So, yeah. Um, so my sister let me not deviate too much because of time my sister i practiced um becoming a more a better person becoming a better person we're always working at better versions of, of ourselves and with my son i'm practicing that as well but one common de denominator i noticed in both of them is that i think sometimes i have a tendency to I can, I can, of course, I, my child, with my child, I, I can spoil my child. I can treat my child with a lot of love. But when it comes to abuse, I think it's easier to abuse 
maybe my child or to abuse maybe my spouse or to abuse and um the word abuse is a very heavy word but i i, I can't think of a lighter word to use please if you guys because i'm not necessarily uh abuse is a very strong word to be honest but i think a lot of what we do here to an extent is a degree of abuse there are different degrees of abuse but i feel that it's easier to be emotionally abusive maybe even physically abusive maybe verbally abusive i'm not actually i'm not verbally abusive i used to have a sharp tongue when i was in uni or no maybe secondary school uni had changed but those that remember me from secondary school knew that my mouth was a bleed to cut you but yeah I think we're more abusive to those who are closest to us because we know that um, they've seen us and sometimes they have nobody else. They have nobody to report us to. They have nobody to to share that image of us with that, that we are afraid of, that, that perfect image that we have. We're afraid of damaging. We, we, they have nobody to tell. So we are our best and our beastest moods with them because yeah we're all that they have if that makes any sense right we're all that they have we're truly all that they have so we are we are about our best selves with them we show them our best selves but we show them our worst selves as well because because there's 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 nobody else right yeah i have to go now there's nobody else they can they can share that with now with my child i'm more mindful because i don't want to pass on any trauma to my child i don't want to pass on anything negative to my child um so yeah mostly what i'm doing now what, what i've done is reflective but i've also done mindfulness i'm also very conscious when it's time to discipline him I take in a breath or two. When I'm doing anything, I try to do it. So I had a call come in and yeah. So yeah. Well, where was I? Um, so so mo most of what I'm practicing now is mindfulness. And I'm also practicing... Um, I'm practicing mindfulness. And I'm practicing reflection. I'm conscious, you know. I'm more conscious... And then I speak to people. I speak to my sister, my husband from time to time. Like what I'm doing now, I'm sharing. I think another thing one can do is to seek professional help therapy, which I don't really know if we have here. But I don't know. I don't think my case has gotten to the extent of seeking therapy. But yeah, just let's be mindful. Let's be mindful. Let's be reflective. Let's sit back and think back on both the positive and negative experiences that we had as children both with our parents with our villages uncles aunties our friends the schools we went to and let's um let's come and let's accumulate them and you know pick out the goods like sieve put them together in one place and say okay this will be beneficial if i repeat um and bring out the negative put them in one place and see how is this affecting me now how can i work on this and how can i not pass this on if that makes any sense that's the summary of my thoughts my discussion my reflections today i hope it has been helpful to somebody out there much love from this end of the world and please don't judge me don't judge me <laughs> We all have our, we all have our skeletons in our cupboards. I just brought out a bit of mine. Thank you and much love from this end of the world.